Hey, what is up Thrive Austin Church? It's good to see you on this Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Thursday devotional. I hope that you found these devotionals to be encouraging for you and your walk with God. And uh, if you feel like anybody would benefit from these, just feel free to give it a like, give it a share, uh, share it with somebody who, who might be in need. Uh, but before I dive into God's word today and dive into what the Lord has really placed on my heart for today's Devotional, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. So maybe you didn't get a chance to uh, get in on our congregational meeting that happened a couple of weeks ago, um, but really exciting stuff is going on in the life of our church. I am super, super pumped. I am super, super excited over the last few months. We've really um, felt like the Lord is stirring uh, something in our church community and is calling us uh, to take some steps so that we can get into a building, so that we can have a uh, a long-term place where we can serve, where we can minister, uh, where we can do all the things that we love to do, ministering to children, ministering to our youth, also ministering to the community. Uh, so that's our goal. We want to be in a building within the next year or so. And so uh, when COVID is over, we prayerfully as a church have come together. Our board came together, our staff came together, and then our church collective came together and we believe that God is calling us to meet on Saturday nights at Point Community Church uh, until we are able to save up the money to get into our own building, which we think we can do uh, within one year. So uh, whenever we finally relaunch and we start meeting in person again, we will no longer be meeting at Grisky Middle School, but instead we'll be meeting at Point Community Church. Pastor Nick Schock has opened his doors and they are amazingly allowing us to, to meet in their building uh, for a few months while we save the money and get ready to go into our new facility and our saving is already underway. So I encourage you guys, um, yeah, just uh, give generously to the building cause and the building fund and uh, we'll be meeting on Saturday nights uh, beginning as soon as COVID is over. We don't have a date yet, but as soon as we do, I will announce it to you. But um, with that out of the way, uh, I want to dive into our devotional for today. And it's really simple. Uh, I'm Basically, my devotional is based today on one verse. But I want to begin just by, uh, by asking you a question today. How many of you listening today, maybe you have before, have you ever purchased a brand new car? Ever purchased a brand new vehicle? You know, the first brand new vehicle I ever purchased in my life is actually the vehicle that I drive to this day. Uh, it's 2010. I'm pretty fresh out of college. I've been out of college for about a year and a half, and I decide it's time to buy my first brand new vehicle. And so I go to the dealership, I buy a brand new Chevy Silverado. It was awesome. I was so proud of that brand new truck. It was amazing. I was so glad to have it. And I took perfect care of it. It was in immaculate condition at all times. And uh, it was my baby. And a few years later, we felt like the Lord was calling us to move to Austin, Texas to start a brand new church. And part of starting that brand new church meant that we were going to be meeting in a portable location at an elementary school. And so I'll never forget the first Sunday, I remember attaching that trailer onto my truck and uh, hauling it towards Patton Elementary School where we would have our first service ever. Now, on my way there, something crazy happened, and I don't know how this possibly happened. I, I swear that while I was pulled over at a stop sign, I think somebody jumped out of their car and unlatched my trailer from my truck, but somehow my trailer got detached from the truck. And so I'm rolling down the road and I'm pumping on my brakes, and as I'm pumping on my brakes, my truck stops, the trailer does not stop, and it runs into the back of my truck creating a giant dent on my back bumper. Now, I get out of the truck, I look at the trailer, I look at the damage, and it is obvious there is a giant, giant dent. And I'll tell you, in that moment, I felt sick. I felt sick. So I put the trailer back on the hitch, I drive it on into the school. We have an amazing service. It was the first Sunday that we ever met. Uh, it was a dream coming true. Uh, seeing people gather together, worship together. It was just an amazing Sunday. And uh, I came out of the building just so fired up and I went to go help load up the trailer and I looked down and I saw that dent again. Now, remember, I was, in, I was on cloud nine. I felt great. 
I was so pumped up. I was so excited. Everything was great until I saw that dent again and I felt sick to my stomach. And I'll be honest, even to this day, when I look at that dent on the back of my truck, it still makes me a little bit sick to my stomach. It doesn't matter what kind of mood I'm in when I look at that dent, it's just a reminder of that day that the trailer smashed into the back of my truck. And the worst part about it was it was probably my fault. Now, you might be wondering why I shared that story with you today. The reason I shared that story about the dent in the back of my truck is because I think it applies to many of us in our personal lives as well. All of us, we've got mistakes that we've made in the past. We've got dents in our lives, maybe dents that we've caused on our own or maybe dents that have been caused to us. And every time we think about that thing, it doesn't matter what kind of a mood we're in, we can be in the greatest mood until we see that person. Maybe we see him, maybe we see her, Maybe we hear that song and suddenly it reminds us of that time where we made that mistake, that weak moment where we acted out of sin. And all of a sudden, all of the feelings of guilt, all of the feelings of pain, all of the feelings of shame, they come flooding back. And we find ourselves in this place of, in some cases, even feeling hopelessness or despair. And the truth is, is we've all got dents. We've all got mistakes that we've made in the past. And if we're not careful, we can allow those dents to identify us. But aren't you glad that in the scriptures, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Paul says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so what that means is that in Christ, you, I, we are completely forgiven. In Christ, you are completely forgiven. And in Christ, your identity is not found in the dents that you've caused and in the dents that have been caused to you. Your identity is not in the dents, but your identity is in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, so many times I think we walk around and we allow ourselves to be identified by our failures, by our past, by the mistakes that we've made, but I can't, I want to share with somebody here today. I feel like there's somebody who needs to hear this. Your identity is not in your dents, but instead it's in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you that no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter what has been done unto you, your identity is in Christ. And and Christ says that you are a beloved child of God a child of God, and that's your identity. And when you know that, and when you live in that, and when you walk in that, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are, you can have hope, you can have joy, you can have courage, because you know who you are in Christ. And there's incredible freedom in that. And sometimes it's not even like a one-time thing, I don't think. Because even myself, I find myself from time to time slipping into feelings of fear, feelings of guilt, feelings of despair. And I have to go to Christ over and over again on a daily basis sometimes even just to be reminded that I am His Son. I am His beloved child. And when I understand that my identity is as a loved child of God, and that's my true identity, it's, it's not found in what I do. It's not found in what I produce. Uh, my identity is not in my role as a husband. My identity is not in my role as a pastor. My identity is not in a role uh, even as a father. But my identity is in the fact that I am a child of God. And when we truly recognize that, And when we truly step into that, then we realize that we cannot fail. As long as we are obedient to Jesus, as long as we are sitting at the feet of Jesus, giving our lives to Him, doing our best to serve Him, inviting Him to come and fill us with His presence, with His Holy Spirit, then we cannot fail. Failure is impossible when we are living lives of obedience to Jesus. Now, the outcome... It may not match whatever our expectations are, but the truth is is that when we are rooted in our identity as children of God and we live our lives obedient to what He calls us into, we cannot fail. We can't fail. There's no way to fail. 
And so hopefully that encourages you today that no matter what you're going through, no matter what it is, no matter what struggles you might be up against, no matter what you've done in the past, no matter what was done to you, your identity is as a child of God. And when you truly embrace your identity as God's beloved child and you recognize that he doesn't love you any more or any less based on your performance, when you truly begin to live into that reality, you will find yourself living in so much more peace, so much more hope, and so much more joy. And all of those things are what I would hope for you today, that you would experience those things. So, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your presence. God, I thank you that you speak to us, that you reach out to us, that even in the midst of a difficult situation, even in the midst of quarantine, even in the midst of a uh, global pandemic, God, you are with us. You are still on the throne. And God, your spirit comes and you bring us comfort and you bring us peace, even in our deepest times of need. And so, Lord, I pray for every person listening to this stream right now. God, I pray that you would come and you would bring comfort to their hearts. For those struggling with anxiety and depression, Lord, I pray that you would just come, bring comfort and joy. Where there is a dark cloud hanging over the heads of of anyone who might be listening to this stream right now, I pray that you would come, you would send the light of your son Jesus, and that you would just clear the clouds away. Let there be joy, let there be life, let there be hope. Father, thank you um, that you never leave us or forsake us, that you are always with us. And Father, I just pray your blessing on every single person listening to this devotional today. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, thank you so much for tuning into the devotional today. If you got something out of it, if you were blessed by it, I just encourage you, give it a like, give it a share, share it with somebody who you think might benefit from it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Thank you.